In 1965, as NASA sought to dominate the space race, a simple yet reliable tool was needed to facilitate communication and avoid crucial hazards. Nevada inventor Paul C. Fisher met the challenge, inventing a highly durable, non-leak space pen that was capable of writing in almost any condition, including zero gravity. Fisher applied theories of science and physics to create a revolutionary writing tool that surpassed the original intended audience of the general public, facilitating communication vital to the success of NASA, of NASA missions. Before we talk about Fisher and his company, we should first talk about the ballpoint pen and what came up to it, so we have an idea of how the space pen was made. John J. Loud invented the first leather marker. Loud was a Harvard-educated lawyer and leather tanner. Born in 1884, Loud wanted to be able to mark his leather for cutting with a steady line because pens and pencils did not work well on rough surfaces. He patented his leather marker on October 30th, 1880. The marker worked by having the ball at the tip so that when it was pressed in, the ink would be able to flow out. It worked well on rough surfaces, but his patent lapsed because of the small targetable audience. Soon after John J. Loud's patent lapsed, many inventors tried and failed to make a usable ballpoint pen until Laszlo Biro. Laszlo Biro, a Hungarian-born inventor, worked as a newspaper editor and wanted a smudge-free pen. Laszlo Biro took this idea to his brother, Girago Biro, and they came up with a thick, viscous ink in a ballpoint pen. The ball and socket system worked by having the ball fitting the tip so that air could not get in unless the ballpoint was pressed, so that ink could flow out. Laszlo Biro showed off his invention in the Budapest International Fair in 1931. Laszlo Biro didn't patent his pen for seven years after, on June 15, 1938. The brothers and their mutual friend, Juan George Mann, opened a Biro's pen in Argentina. The brothers and Mann named the pens Baromes, by combining their last names. And the pens in Argentina today are still called Baromes. Paul C. Fisher was born on October 10, 1913, in Lebanon, Kansas. Fisher grew up in Ellsworth, Kansas, and he said that once, while he was a kid, he made a radio out of an oatmeal box, some wires, and a crystal. Fisher attended college at Kansas and Iowa. Fisher's first jobs were as a bread store manager, a truck driver, an accountant, and the manager of a ball bearing company. During World War II, he was an aeronautical engineer. After the war, Fisher was given the opportunity to join a pen company in October after the war. He passed it up, and then right afterwards, in the following three months, the company made $5 million. Fisher didn't mind. Fisher opened his own company in 1948, and ran in the De Democratic preliminary in 60, 1960 and 64 against JFK. When Paul Fisher died in 2006, he had a large family of six children, 14 grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. In 1965, Fisher showed his latest pen models to NASA, but NASA just overlooked Fisher's pens. The reason NASA overlooked Fisher's pens was that they had just spent a fortune on mechanical pencils. The pencils cost about $129, or to today's standards, over $1,000 to manufacture just one. The reason NASA and the USSR space program needed a writing utensil was that during the space race between the US and USSR, Astronauts needed to record information safely. The risks of using current utensils in space was that the pens would leak and wouldn't work without gravity. And two problems for the pencils was that graphite shards that broke off from the pencil which sh could short circuit electronics and <clears throat> the wood shards that would come off of pencils or wood shavings in an oxygen rich environment meant that if there was one single spark they would go up in flames and really fast and possibly explode. In 1966, Fisher invented the AG-7 that was designed to work in space. 
Fisher's pen that he showed NASA was his bullet pen, which worked in space, but was not designed for space. The AG-7 was. The AG-7 used the same pressurized ink cartridge as the bullet pen, but they spent more time to make the pen design to work better. But more importantly, it had one advantage, thixotropic ink. Thixotropic means that it stays as a gelatinous state <clears throat> unless applied with pressure. And how the pressure would be applied would be by the ballpoint getting pressed in on the piece of paper. Fisher and the team that was working with him on building his AG7 pen model were having problems with making the ink. The issue was that it wasn't thixotropic, so they were trying to figure out how to make it so. Fisher's story of how he came up with the idea to fix the ink goes as told. Fisher claimed that he had a dream where his dad told him to add a little bit of rosin to the ink. Fisher came to the chemist, chemist the next morning and told him to add a little bit of rosin to the ink. The chemist did at his, as he was told, but he knew it would not work. A while later, the chemist came back starting that he knew what Fisher meant. Resin. The ink was at the final piece of the project, so the pen started getting manufactured. In 1967, NASA decided to look at Fisher's AG-7. NASA ran tests with results such as the pen could work with, out, or against gravity, work in temperatures from negative 46 degrees Celsius through 204 degrees Celsius, be able to write in water, grease, oil, sand, etc. NASA issued the Fisher Space Pen as the standard issue pen for space missions, including the moon landing. It was very advantageous for both parties when NASA bought Fisher's pens. NASA got to buy 400 pens at half price, or $6 per unit, which in today's standards would be $50. Fisher got the ability to market his pens of having historical significance, which helped increase his marketing strategies to help him sell more pens. Sadly, computers started to get marketed to the general public in 1974. As the computers became more popular throughout the 70s and onwards, it severely impacted the marketability of pens. And today, some pens, some even from Fisher, are just sold as novelties. Fisher's ingenious pen design also caught the attention of the Soviets in 1969 who at the time were in the Cold War with the US. The USSR and the US were also in the space race, trying to best each other with space technology, with the ultimate goal of reaching the moon. The Soviets bought a hundred of Fisher's pens, as well as a thousand refill cartridges. Fisher later used this in an advertisement, saying, even the Russians used my pens. Some other times, Fisher Pen Company advertised the pen using many different marketing techniques. Phrases such as, it can last for 100 years without dying, and it writes for 30 miles, greatly benefited the popularity of the space pen. The pen was even mentioned on many radio shows and also on popular show Good Morning America, where they named it the best stocking stuffer in 1996. Fisher's space pen had made a huge impact on communication by updating the pen's design. Most pens that have a cap, or the clicky pens, use his genius idea of a pressurized ink cartridge. Pens have become able to write in worse conditions than before, making them w better at communicating. But as I said before, computers. Computers have made pens obsolete to the point where most pens have become novelties. I hope that next time you grab a pen, you can thank the forefathers of the pen for giving you such a tool. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed.